So uh, before we start, just uh, let me know, as you told me uh, yesterday, what idea do you have? What is Citrix and what kind of work you are doing right now in your current organization? Uh, sir, uh, basically Citrix, Citrix is a uh, virtual app by which uh, end user get the uh, get the uh, by by which end user get the window where he can do anything. <coughs> okay. Like like we provide a link uh, and uh, by the link and you just stream a uh, uh, desktop and uh, that particular desktop he, he can do anything sir. okay so basically if we talk about the citrix so basically citrix is a software and actually headquarters of this company are located in us florida and basically Citrix provide the technical products for virtualization and the top most product given by the Citrix for virtualization are GenApp and Gen Desktop. Earlier, they was called as GenApp and Gen Desktop, but now things are changed. They guys rename GenApp and Gen Desktop to Citrix Virtual App and Virtual Desktop, right? right so this is a basic definition. Okay. Now coming to the next. Here, as you can see, the working and key component of Citrix, right? So, just let me know what idea you are getting with that particular network diagram. Are you able to understand that? Yes, sir. Where it gone? Now, try to explain me. As you are working as a Citrix administrator, so you might have some idea. What is this? Right. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, firewall is uh, firewall, sir. Uh, basically, I don't, I don't have more idea about the firewall, sir. We know. Uh, Forget about the firewall. firewall. Forget about the firewall. I will let you know what is firewall. Okay. Yeah. Uh, gateway. Gateway is a thing uh, by which uh, gateway is a passing in. in to, uh, passing instrument by which uh, means when firewall connected or switch connected uh, gateway by gateway uh, Citrix gateway sir a gateway काम करता है sir जैसे कि वो pass करने के लिए जैसे कि switch हम लगाते हैं या gateway by gateway दूसरा VDI हमारा app कोई जुड़ता है बड़ी answer is simple the gateway is a secure path for the traffic, right? Whatever traffic yes, we are getting from outside of our network, all those traffic are getting into through a secure tunnel and that particular tunnel is known as Citrix gateway or firewall, right? Okay, so, yeah. so basically it is a path for network to travel, right? In a secure way, right? You need some security for your internal network. Na? So that is the only reason why we are configuring the firewall. So basically, let me explain. We are starting from the left hand side of your screen. So are you uh, with your laptop or uh, you are you have joined with mobile device? Sir, laptop, sir, laptop. Sir. Okay. So <laughs> starting from the left. So the first one is the end user device. It could be a laptop, it could be a desktop, or it could be a cell phone or mobile phone, Android or uh, like iPhone, whatever it is. Okay, it is an end user device, and in that particular end user device, what we did, we must have to install one application which is known as Citrix Workspace or Citrix Receiver, right? So basically, Citrix Receiver uh, is a <laughs> client and application from Citrix, and that enables a secure connectivity between the end user device to our virtual machine or to our data center, whatever we have hosted for end user from this is a part of our data center. All those core components are stored in our data center only. Okay. And this is the end user device and this is a firewall. Okay. So firewall, uh, we have multiple types of firewalls available like, you know, the Cisco firewalls or the 
hardware firewalls or net scaler we can use it it's net scaler as a firewall multiple option we have for firewall so firewall is totally up to us right so we can configure uh, <laughs> we have multiple options to configure the firewall so as uh, what i was explaining this is the end user device and in that particular end user device we have to install one application which is known as Citrix workspace right and after that user must have to open a web browser in his laptop or desktop and on that particular web browser user must have to enter a storefront address right so storefront address could be anything www.xyz.com or your office address right so what user has to do user has to reach the storefront server right storefront basically if we are talking about the storefront so storefront basically it is a web page for end user when user has typed some HTTPS or HTTP address <laughs> in the web browser, user will get one web page, okay? And on that web page, what user have to do? User have to enter the credentials given by the organization, right? And after entering the credentials, like when user enters the credentials, he must have to enter the username and password and he has to click on login button, right? So once he clicked on login button, that request from storefront goes to the delivery controller and from delivery controller it goes to the active directory server why because we have to authenticate, authenticate the, we yes, have sir. to active directory server authenticate the credentials whether those credentials are valid or not right so if credentials are valid in that case again request goes to the delivery controller from the delivery controller uh, the request goes to the sql server why because in SQL data, service, in SQL server, recording. yeah, in SQL server, database will be there and delivery controller verify with the database which application or desktop allocated or configured for that particular user, right? And after database, yes, once delivery controller gets the data, like what is configured for that user, that delivery mm -hmm. controller again forward that request to the hypervisor like whatever we have hosted we must uh, host all those applications in a hypervisor as a virtual machine or as a virtual application right so delivery controller forward that request to the hypervisor yeah, yeah. and yeah. all those whatever uh, things are published to end user all those uh, machines will get powered on or will get display to end user then again that query uh, comes to the storefront and from storefront the query goes to the user laptop or desktop after click on login button, if everything seems fine, like Active Directory or credentials are valid, within a second, user will get the options nice for sure. Windows 10 machine or for application, whatever we have published for him, right? So this is a nano, nano, nano second process. User just has to click on login and within a second, he will get the uh, options over there. But this is a long process and it has been completed within a nanoseconds right can and i sir, repeat sir no sir can i sir repeat by myself sir whatever i get by yourself yeah please sir uh, as you know sir, uh, as you told me sir as i get sir uh, the, basically we uh, started from citric workspace app it, it basically it's the end user application uh, user must have the citric workspace uh, and uh, then when he click uh, and uh, after entering the uh, HT, uh, after entering the uh, uh, URL web uh, URL of a storefront, mm -hmm. a storefront uh, uh, then the storefront hit the delivery controller, mm -hmm. and after that delivery controller delivery controller passing the active directory for the authentication of the user user is authenticated or not. Yeah, delivery controller point, passes the query, right? query uh, to uh, AD uh, yeah. and then after uh, then after uh, uh, if your delivery controller get the authentication of the that particular user then yes, delivery after uh, validation the, only when active directory that, validate the credential after that that query goes to the sql server okay? sql server and then after uh, 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 after that sql server uh, delivery uh, delivery controller passes the query to the server vda where uh, where he get uh, what type of uh, desktop and hypervisor is uh, 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 is hosted for the that user and then suddenly back to the uh, uh, 
it's a trick for the space and user get the windows uh, where he can do anything for right and after getting the icons what user has to do user has to click on that particular icon and after that one ica.ica file will be downloaded right and user has to launch the session with the help of workspace got it got it sir got it so this is a basic process and uh, i think <coughs> these are the few more uh, components like citrix studio director and license server basically studio is a centralized management studio with the help of citrix studio you can perform multiple operation on the single screen like you can create the machine catalogs you can configure the delivery groups multi or you can configure the policies multiple things you can do uh, that is a separate topic we will cover it in upcoming sessions okay okay sure coming to the director do you have any idea about what is citrix director the director is a basically web based tool where uh, uh, where uh, we manage the uh, where we manage the citrix uh, user log of session and uh, sir i have wrote the um, definition of director but uh, in simply what director is a web based tool that enable it to support and help the team to monitor and environment troubleshoot issues before they become system critical and perform support task for end user right so basically it is a remote tool for troubleshooting prospective got it if you have to okay, troubleshoot sir. any vdi you can take a shadow of that machine and you can uh, kill the sessions or you can uh, kill the non responding process right if yes, user is complaining like this application is not working or <laughs> his virtual machine is not getting powered on for those kind of issues you can uh, log in to the director you can search for that user you can search for the machine and whatever the action you have to perform you can perform okay so basically and yeah, remote tool and yeah. by that and by, yeah sir remote tool and by director we also get where is user log in, in which uh, uh, in which media uh, uh, user is logging which desktop user is logging which is where he start all the thing we get from the director sir right how many sessions are running what users are doing when user last log in yeah. when user last log off those kind of all the logs we can get easily from the director and if we talk about the license server so license server is something relevant to uh, uh, for uh, license allocation right so uh, this is a one time procurement of license you have to procure license from the citrix like just suppose we have got 100 license from citrix so we have to we cannot use a uh, more than 100 virtual machines with that license right so we have to manage in that way got it got it sir, sir but in license i i uh, read uh, there are two the concurrent license and something something like that sir basically uh, three kinds of license are there users license uh, computer license and concurrent license okay so all those okay, three sir. terms we will cover up in upcoming sessions okay okay sure sir now coming to the delivery controller so can you please uh, explain what is delivery controller the delivery controller sir actually sir uh, delivery the de delivery controller is the central management component of a site each site has one or, or more delivery controller it is installed at uh, at least one server in the data center for site reliability and availability controller should be installed on more than one server sir mere ko bas ye yaad hai sir matlab isko aap thoda sa elaborate kar de sir aap explain kar de sir kyun maine ye definition aise aise bataya tha okay so basically uh, what uh, you explain right so uh, as i explained you earlier whatever the request are or queries we are getting from the user or from the store front or from the hypervisor from the active directory all those kind of queries are centrally managed by delivery controller so basically delivery controller it is a core component for citrix right and with the help of delivery controller we can manage the entire infra it is actually responsible for the entire operations whatever is going on right sir the delivery controller and what is the difference between delivery controller and group sir group is a different thing uh, if we are talking about the delivery groups right so 
delivery yes, with the help of delivery groups we can specify like which application needs to publish to which user right this is a task for delivery group with the help of delivery group yes. just suppose you are having 100 virtual machines for users right so you have to perf you have to publish single machine to single user na you cannot uh, publish all the machines to all the users right yes sir so with the help of delivery group it is a kind of group just suppose if you have a a uh, team in your uh, company hr team will be there finance team will be there it yes, team sir. will be there so you have to uh, divide you have to configure the group as per the teams like for it teams different virtual machine will be there for hr yes, sir, team yes, different sir. virtual machine will be there why because yes, it members required some technical softwares right uh, if we compare with the finance team they guys don't require any technical software what they require they require financial softwares right like tally or oracle if we talk for the hr team so for hr team uh, uh, like different software may be required which is relevant to uh, the salary purpose or any other purpose right those so we have to configure uh, machines as per the uh, department right and simply after configuring a group we can move that particular machine for that particular group got it okay. so basically each site must have one or more delivery controller right why for redundancy prospective if one goes down so in that case second delivery controller will be available for the operations right yes sir high so, availability sir. yeah for high availability so uh, that kind of <laughs> so basically if you talk about the definition for the delivery controller the delivery controller is the central management component for a genap and gen desktop site okay each site has one or more delivery controller it is installed on at least one server in data center for reliability and availability right and controller should be installed on one or more than one server if your deployment includes virtual machine hosted on the hypervisor or cloud service okay so this is a basic thing so delivery controller we will cover up all the topics in details okay so any doubt so far here on that screen Yes, so basically <laughs> i have divided the entire session or entire class into 10 lectures okay so yes, first lecture is introduction and prerequisite like what we are discussing here this is a first lecture and it is just for introduction and prerequisites are like what will be required how to configure the things what we have to do what are the basic things right those kind of things we are discussing in the first first session okay in the second session what we will know we will learn how to install and configure the delivery controller and other core components that will be a practical okay in the second lecture we will learn how to configure the core component in the third lecture we will learn how to configure the hypervisor how to install the hypervisor and how to configure the hypervisor so just let me know what do you understand with the word hypervisor and why we are using hypervisor sir i i don't have any more idea about hypervisor hypervisor but i use the hypervisor component where i uh, uh, registered my uh, where uh, all types of uh, means uh, uh, basically i handle five types sir emia amr uh, la uh, emia amr la singapore and uh, sir uh, australia mm -hmm. all uh, particular site have uh, particular hypervisor just mm -hmm. like at emia we uh, for uh, sir server ki hum puri status sir hypervisor pe dekh lete hain ki server kab hamara स्टार्ट हुआ था कब रिबूट हुआ था सर्वर दैट इज फाइन व्हाट आई एम आस्किंग इज दैट व्हाट इज हाइपरवाइजर हाइपरवाइजर पे हम क्या करते हैं दैट इज डिफरेंट डिफरेंट थिंग राइट फॉर गेट अबाउट द हाइपरवाइजर लेट मी नो व्हाट इज वर्चुअलाइजेशन एंड व्हाई वी आर यूजिंग वर्चुअलाइजेशन सर द हाइपरवाइजर और cloud service host of the virtual machine in our site this can be the when you we used to host a, a application and desktop as well as vms you used to host the citrix virtual app and desktop component 
the hypervisor is installed on a host computer dedicated entirely the running the hypervisor and hosting virtual machine sir i have the definition but sir pura pata nahi hai sir aap explain kar de sir okay so the thing is that if we are talking about the virtualization or the hypervisor right so why we are using virtualization to reduce the hardware cost right yes, sir. and how we are doing it by hypervisor okay okay let me explain let me close that thing and just suppose uh, this is my laptop okay? okay and you are getting the hardware configuration here i am having i7 cpu my memory is 16 gb okay and this is my hard drive okay so what i did on my physical hardware i have installed windows 10 as a operating system okay right so but now this is my limitation for this hardware why because i have installed os directly on the physical hardware so i cannot create any more virtual machine on this particular hardware got it so on other hand on other hand i have one more option to create few more uh, to install few more give me a moment Uh, sorry actually my cell phone was vibrating okay so <clears throat> what i am what i am explaining here is that i have procured one i7 machine with 16 gb of ram and 500 uh, gb of ssd right so to run windows 10 machine 16 gb memory is not required right we can run windows 10 on uh, 4 gb of ram only it is sufficient right and also 500 GB of hard drive is also not required. Why? We can install Windows 10 in 20 or 30 GB of storage, right? So what I am doing here, I am just wasting my resources, right? Because <laughs> in companies or in uh, organizations, you actually users actually do not require a uh, 512 GB of hard drive for as, a, as their C drive, right? Why? Because they do not have to store any movies or any songs or any of other personal stuff right yes. Yes. so what we can do we can limit that uh, hard drive to 30 gb for each user right so but again problem is here why problem is that we cannot uh buy the 30 gb market uh, 30 gb hard drive from the market sir one minute one minute sir let me explain again sir Mm -hmm. Actually, sir, hypervisor is a uh, platform where all user get the uh, uh, hard disk and memory as well as they required, sir. Means we did uh, we do not create uh, um, means that we every user pe jaake sir ek uh, hardware nahi uh, matlab jaati ye nahi kar sakte. Stream hota hai hamara jo sir hamara uh, jo desktop stream hota hai user pe, wo mm -hmm. hypervisor ke through hota hai. जो सर मैं समझ रहा हूं अभी आप जो समझाएं और उसको जितना रिक्वायर्ड होता है स्पेस की वो हाइपरवाइजर से उसको मिल जाता है जितना मेमोरी की रिक्वायर्ड होती है हो जाता है स्ट्रीमिंग प्रोसेस से राइट right. स्ट्रीमिंग प्रोसेस की अगर हम बात करें सो इन सिंपल वर्ड विद अ फिजिकल हार्ड ड्राइव वी कैन क्रिएट द वर्चुअल हार्ड ड्राइव जस्ट सपोज इफ आई एम हैविंग 1 टीबी ऑफ हार्ड ड्राइव विद मी राइट सो विद दैट 1 टीबी ऑफ हार्ड ड्राइव आई कैन क्रिएट हंड्रेड्स ऑफ वर्चुअल ड्राइव्स फॉर एंड यूजर्स विद सिंगल हार्ड ड्राइव सो दैट इज व्हाई वी आर यूजिंग द वर्चुअलाइजेशन वी आर रिड्यूसिंग द कॉस्ट ऑफ हार्डवेयर राइट सो दिस इज माय लैपटॉप ओके सो इफ आई हैव टू यूटिलाइज दोस हार्डवेयर रिसोर्सेज लाइक 16 जीबी ऑफ रैम सो व्हाट आई कैन डू आई हैव इंस्टॉल्ड वन हाइपरवाइजर इन माय लैपटॉप इन माय केस इट इज वीएमवेयर वर्कस्टेशन प्रो दिस इज आल्सो the hypervisor right and 
in that hypervisor i have created few machines like domain controller delivery controller and gen server i can turn all the machines on and my resources are enough to run those machines right so basically if if i talk about the hypervisor so basically two types of hypervisors are available into the market right so first one hypervisor is type 1 hypervisor and type 2 hypervisor so do you have any yes. idea what is type 1 hypervisor and what is type 2 hypervisor the type 1 hypervisor uh, and type sir maine suna to tha thoda padha bhi hai lekin sir abhi bhul gaya sir type uh, listen, wo... listen let me explain so basically we are having uh, two types of hypervisors available in the market okay so if we talk about the type 1 hypervisor so type 1 hypervisors are the bare metal hypervisors so what we have to do on type 1 hypervisor we directly install that hypervisor as a operating system on physical hardware right just suppose yes, you have a dell server and on dell server you do not have to install any operating system like windows server or windows 10 you can directly install that linux based operating system on that dell server and your hypervisor will be ready and type 2 hypervisors actually requires an operating system right so in my case this is type 2 hypervisor the example for type 1 hypervisors are uh, vmware esxi host citrix hypervisor those are the uh, type 1 hypervisors why because we are directly installing those hypervisors on the physical hardware got it and this is a type 2 hypervisor like vmware workstation pro why because it is requiring an operating system to install so right because first i have installed windows 10 on much on my machine and on my windows 10 i have installed uh, this hypervisor as a application so type 2 hypervisors are the applications right like it is hosted on os right uh, so basic os sir our uh, laptop uh, system basic system os sir Right. Type one, type one hypervisor is installed on directly on physical server. Sir. Right. So, the examples for type two hypervisors are VMware Workstation Pro, VirtualBox, or any other software. I am not getting uh, the name in my mind right now. But those kind of whatever we the hypervisor which we are installing as an application is type two hypervisor on the operating system and which we are installing as a operating system on directly on the physical hard hardware right so those are the type 1 hypervisors got it got it sir got it okay this type 1 is the hypervisor which is directly installed on the uh, os and the type 2 is a just like an application where we use the uh, application hypervisor is called a type 2 right so where he was so i have divided the entire series into the 10 lectures so in the third one we will learn how to install and configure the hypervisor in the fourth one we will learn how to create a site and how to add delivery controller to that site in the fifth one we will learn how to install and configure the virtual delivery agent in the sixth one we will learn how to create the machine catalog seventh one how to create the delivery group eighth one how to install the storefront server and in the ninth one we will test our deployment what we did how things are working right and tenth one is for troubleshooting and backup plan okay so this is a plan okay so to cover each and everything uh 10 lectures will be required okay and as per my knowledge sir, yeah what about sir pvs sir pvs mcs uh, right now we are working on mcs right as we are going to create machine catalog after mcs i will let you know how to configure the pbs console okay first we need to create the setup are you getting my point first we have to create a data center then only you will be able to deploy pbs now without any data center uh, how you can uh, like i cannot explain anything without practical first we have to create the data center then only we will uh, configure the PBS environment, okay? And this uh, this is a summary 
of what is required into that test lab. First machine will be our domain controller. So I think uh, have you ever worked on the domain controllers? Yes, sir. How to create users? How to change passwords? How to? Uh... Yes, sir. I have idea, sir. Domain. Uh, I uh, I have little bit idea about domain controllers. Okay. I, I, so I am familiar with the domain controller. Okay. So our first server will be the domain controller. Second server will be the delivery controller. Okay. And third and fourth servers will be the hypervisors, Gen Server 01 and Gen Server 02. And fifth and sixth uh, machines will be our Windows 10 client machine. Like with those client machine, we will reach the delivery controller with the help of uh, Citrix workspace and we will test like how we are getting the applications, right? Right? Those kind of activities we will perform. Okay. So as you can see, I have given some host name to them and the ram what is required 2 gb for domain controller 6 gb for delivery controller 10 10 gb for hypervisors and 2 2 gb for windows 10 machine and all those machines are joined into my domain which is techamtech.com but in your case domain may be different okay yes sir. so that is done and now <laughs> to uh, just let me know what hardware you have what is the hardware configuration of your laptop right now Hello. Hardware configuration of my laptop. Yeah. Sir, to, cre to create a data center, what is the hardware configurations you have right now with you? Sir, I have sir 500 GB hard disk sir and 4 GB uh, memory sir in my laptop sir. And what is the processor? Uh, let me check sir. Sir, Intel Plat Pentium Gold, sir, something like that. Uh, huh, 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 huh. But you are having very old configuration laptop. Is it possible for you to uh, manage some uh, good configuration laptop or desktop if you, if you have? If you can arrange from your office or uh, somewhere, uh, some other uh, resources, do you have any any sir, chance? I have, I have my office uh, laptop, sir. But uh, all the thing is not be possible to perform performing on my la office laptop, sir. No, no, no. Uh, what I'm asking is just let me know. Uh, are you daily visiting office no. or not? No, sir. Daily not, sir. So you are working from home, right? Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> Twice in a week, sir. I I I am arranged, sir. Uh, I can arrange, but right now it's not possible. But I can arrange, sir. Sir, all the thing I getting by your video, sir. You just uh, performing all the. Uh, no, no. All, uh, listen. Yeah, uh, that is the only thing. Uh, I will perform all the operations on my laptop. That is not a big deal for me. But uh, what I am, uh, uh, why I am telling this for you? Uh, why? Because. This is for your a uh, practice purpose. You need some time to make some practice, now. Yes. So on my laptop, you will not be able to uh, perform uh, those practice, right? Because my laptop is engaged with me. So anyway, what we will do, we will continue with uh, some more sessions, and uh, you can take your time whenever you can arrange your hardware. You can do that. If you uh, if you will not be yes. able to arrange any hardware, just let me know. I will arrange one hardware for you on rental basis. Okay. So first we will continue with some lectures, okay? Then what I will do, I will hand over uh, uh, my hardware to you or you can arrange any hardware from your side and I will destroy my entire infra, what we will creating, jo bhi hum create karenge in upcoming days. I will destroy all that infra and I will ask you to recreate the infra with your own, okay? For your practice, got it? Got it, sir. Okay, buddy, any doubts so far? No, sir. Okay, buddy. So uh, somehow, you know, uh, <coughs> I've got some information uh, uh, from my family, like somehow I will not be available uh, tomorrow morning uh, because I have to travel. Okay. So, okay, okay. so in that case, is it possible uh, for you to uh, 
reschedule our tomorrow class in the afternoon yeah no issue sir or uh, in the afternoon or in the evening uh, i will let you know the time because you know in the morning i have to travel tomorrow morning and no from issue, sir okay no issue, sir. so I'm, if i'm completely for you sir whenever you no, free sir you can call me sir if something is required what i will do uh, if possible i can take uh, your another class in evening today itself okay so in that way we will cover okay, okay? I will let you know my timings, okay? So no worries. Sometimes uh, we have to travel for uh, uh, multiple purpose, okay? So that is the only reason why I'm telling you that, okay? Okay. Okay, buddy. So what I will do after this, I will share uh, the recording links to you. You can download that video and you can keep that video with you for your learning perspective, okay? And okay. we will connect uh, tomorrow morning, not tomorrow morning, not possible, tomorrow evening or today, today. evening, okay? So that I will let you know when we have to connect, okay? Any doubt? No, sir. Any question? No, sir. So uh, have you ever worked on the DSCP and DNS things? Yes, sir. Okay, means, uh, okay, that will be good because one DSCP server is also required to allocate the IP address and DNS is also required. Okay, perfect. And you have good knowledge of Active Directory as well. And have you ever uh, worked on the SQL server? No, sir. Okay, no, that is not a big deal. Okay, buddy. So have a good day. Uh, this is done from my side. Okay, and we will connect uh, uh, soon. Okay, I will let you know the timings. Okay. Okay, sir. Or please, आप मेरे को बता दो कि शाम को आज मैं क्या पढ़ लूँगा और क्या-क्या देख लूँगा सर या कल जो भी मेरी next class के लिए तुम कुछ भी मत देखो जो भी होगा मैं बताऊंगा ओके क्योंकि तुम बाहर से कहीं से पढ़ोगे YouTube या Google से और तुम्हारे दिमाग में कुछ और फिट हो जाएगा तो मेरे लिए मुश्किल होगा ओके अभी 15 15 लेक्चर्स तक तुम कुछ भी मत देखो जो मैं दिखा रहा हूं बस वो ही देखो ओके तो क्या होता है Google पे मल्टीपल चीजें बहुत सारी इंफॉर्मेशन है जो गलत भी होती है राइट तो वो गलत इंफॉर्मेशन थोड़ा कंफ्यूजन हो जाता है मेरे को सर आप हाँ। मैं सर वीडियो इधर उधर का देखता हूं किसी में कुछ किसी में कुछ और एक मतलब कंटीन्यूअस नहीं देख पाता हूं इसके बाद ये सीरियल वाइज नहीं देख पाता हूं राइट राइट सो इसलिए मैं बोल रहा हूं कि अपने माइंड को कहीं भी डाइवर्ट मत करो जो मैं दिखा रहा हूं बस वही देखो लिए लेक्चर खत्म होने तक ठीक है उसके बाद तुम्हें आईडिया लग जाएगा कि जो तुम देख रहे हो YouTube पे वो सही है या गलत है राइट सो डोंट वरी Uh, I will take care of it, no issue, okay? And तुम आराम से अपना काम करो और बाकी रही बात तुम्हारी ट्रेनिंग की वो मेरे ऊपर छोड़ दो वो मैं कंप्लीट करा दूंगा ओके ओके बड़ी बाय है